caught in the crossfire. on the western cape of South Africa was in for a shock when he came across this strange alien-like creature. At first glance, the mummified elongated torso and large prominent teeth conjure up images of a creature from another planet. Some locals thought they had discovered proof of beings from another world visiting ours, but all may not be as it seems. Local conservationist Llewellyn Dixon inspected the specimen after his son made the shock discovery. I was afraid when I first see the community thought it was anything from an alien to a rare private. However, Dr. Magdalena Braun, who performed an autopsy on the remains, has revealed the truth is a little closer to the bone. This is the body and this is the picture I received and uh, you can see it does look very strange. But if you look at the measurements, it's, it is, it would be the arm span of the human Dr. Braun believes the baby baboon's strange appearance resulted after it died. Many years ago, it's why she was alone. What happens is when, when mother baboon doesn't want to abort the baby that died, she carries it, and she really carries it by the mis midsection of the body. At first they carry it in hand, but then they throw it across the back, and it kind of rests on the base of the tail, and she just walks around balancing it there for days and days and weeks. However, despite the backing of science, not everyone is happy with the explanation. People still don't believe it is a baboon. The teeth look like humans, making it hard for the community to believe. So for now, the mystery appears solved. Unless someone can prove it really is the body of an extraterrestrial. Wait a second. There's something big down there. He's out. He's out. He's right there. Right there. He's moving. He's moving. Right there. He's coming from here. He's coming from here. You got him. Got him. Yes. Woo! Oh my gosh. A shark. formations towered like prehistoric giants as intense waves crashed upon the jagged outcrops. At high tide, the southern coastline of Africa is an unforgiving landscape that has been carved over millions of years. Yet when the tide rolls back, with it recedes the violence of the turbulent water, leaving behind an intricate catacomb of intertidal pools that are teeming with aquatic life. Today we are exploring a stretch of pristine shoreline known as Kenton on Sea. A magical place where the South Atlantic meets the Indian Ocean, and to say the least, it's breathtakingly beautiful. The sand was flawless, the waves of water were warm, and with any luck, we would happen upon and get up close with a variety of bizarre tide pool creatures. The tide is going out at this point. Looks like it's still coming in, but it's actually the best time to search for animals. When all the rocks are still saturated, that means that the animals are still comfortable, which gives us the best chance of actually catching them. The water trapped within the individual pools was crystal clear. So as I scouted from pocket to pocket, I carefully scanned the overhanging ledges and shadowy nooks. If there was ever a place for a sea beast to hide, I was determined to be the seeker. We've got a decent sized crab down here in this little rock pool. There's actually a little blenny next to it as well, which is a small little fish that'll oftentimes sit on the edges of these little cliffs. It's tempting to not go for them both at the same time. We'll see what happens. I'm really after the crab though. I'm gonna use this net because it's a deep pocket of water. Got the bloody at the same time. All right, that's a pretty decent.
good-sized little crab right there. Look at you. Look at those distinct striped markings on the legs. I'm gonna actually have to look this one up in the field guide. I'm not sure exactly what species it is. Let me keep it in the net like that just for a second. Uh oh. Uh. Okay. And I lost him. Hold on. Oh, I got a bunny. Two of them. Okay, game on. All right, well. Lost the crab. Got a bunny. Well, there's the crab. Got him. Now I've got the crab and some blennies. Wow! Hold on, that's how you got away the first time. Look at that, how's about that for cleaning up your mess? All right, well, this is really panning out well for us. Look at these guys. Come here, buddy. I got two of them in one scoop. All right, let me keep the crab underneath the net. He'll be fine. They can't breathe out of water. Look at that. Those are blennies. Those are super cool. They almost look like mud skippers or like an eel-type fish. Notice the elongated shape of the body. Kind of looks like a prickleback. And they do have those long dorsal ridge fins that run down the length of their backs. They actually can breathe for a short amount of time out of the water. So we don't have to worry about them just resting up on my hand. And they can actually skip from pocket of water to pocket of water. What they'll oftentimes do is exactly, oh my gosh, there's an octopus. Nobody move. That's a huge octopus. Okay, I'm 100% positive. Um, I'm gonna let the crab go. All right, I'm going for the octopus, guys. We're abandoning the crab. Nobody move. I can see it's tentacle Mario. If you crouch down here, you might be able to get a shot. Actually, I wonder if I can use my GoPro. Wedge right into that little cavity. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna actually place my net up in this area, try to reach my arm around, and scare. and into the next, and there you have it. We have got ourselves an octopus. Wow. I'm gonna actually let him out of the net and onto my arm. Hopefully I do not take a bite. There you go, buddy. Now they do have a little beak on their underside that of course he could give me a bite with, but the venom of this species is non-lethal. This is the common octopus. They can get bigger than this, but to be honest with you guys, this is the largest octopus I have ever caught, and it is on the move. Wow, look at it, just showing us its valves. Right now, I'm trying to keep it as calm as I can. I don't want it to ink. Look how it's turning dark in coloration, but if I do this, check this out. Set it down, and sort of try to corral it into this pool. What it wants to feel is like it's protected. Look at that color change. Within a matter of seconds, it completely morphs the shape of its body and its coloration. Got an okay shot there? Yeah. This is actually great. You can see it pumping water through the valves on the side of its head. If I keep it like this, it will feel more comfortable. They want to feel concealed. Wow, look at that. And they want to feel like they are hidden. And just like if I were to handle a snake, I want to go one hand to the next. Octopus have eight tentacles, and one of the coolest things about these creatures is that if they lose a tentacle, they can't rejuvenate it. Wow, that is so cool, like a big slimy booger. 
All right, I'm gonna place it back down into this pocket of water. There we go, keep in position, and I'm getting totally slimed right now. All right, now if I just keep my hand positioned, watch the way that it will actually slink. Like, is it gonna go over my arm? I thought it was gonna go under my arm. And as the tide goes out, if these animals are stuck in a shallow pool, they can do this, slink from pocket of water to pocket of water. That is so cool. Now, one of the key defense tactics of all octopus, octopuses for plural, is that they can actually eject ink. And that allows them the ability to disappear into a rock crevice or back into the ocean waters. Now, if the octopus needs to, it can actually stay out of the water for a significant amount of time. The only reason you'd ever find an octopus out of water is if it's moving from tide pool to tide pool. As that tide recedes, the octopus, if it's not in a deep enough pocket, will oftentimes try to find itself back out into the ocean currents. All right, buddy, time to get you back into your pocket. As I released the octopus back into its watery realm, we witnessed an incredible sight the most classic octopi defense maneuver, ink and jet. Whoa! Just got ink. And as it disappeared back into the cavernous rocks, I came to the realization that never before had a single pool of ocean water provided us with so many species. This isolated miniature biome was an absolute goldmine of bizarre aquatic creatures, and I felt incredibly fortunate to have successfully gotten so many of them up close for the cameras. Yet little did we know, the adventure wasn't quite over. As we meandered our way back to the production vehicles, we stumbled upon the one creature I had always dreamed of finding in a tide pool. Oh my gosh, a shark. Oh my gosh, a shark. Get Mario. <laughs> I can't believe that. I'm like, this is so cool. I look over, I'm like, it's a shark. The camera team is just returning. I think the goal here is going to be to catch the shark, look at it very quickly, and then actually just release it back out into the deeper water. We definitely don't want to stress it out or try to handle it for too long, but this is so cool. A shark in a tide pool. All right, guys, so this is super crazy. We just got finished filming with an octopus, and there is a shark in this pocket of water. That is a spotted gully shark. Now they are bottom feeders, and unlike great white sharks or tiger sharks, they only have small little blunted teeth. So, it should be okay for me to gently pick up this shark. Are you guys ready? Yep. I have no idea how fast it's gonna move. I'm gonna actually not use my net and try to grab it by the back of the tail. They have very sandpaper-like skin. So I should be able to grip onto it, no problem. Heads up. Okay, I got a hold of it there. Bringing it up. Hey, buddy. Look at that. Whoa. That is the first shark we have ever caught or featured on the Brave Wilderness Channel. What a beautiful fish. Now, the way that I can tell that this is a spotted gully shark, See all those black spots? Pretty obvious, right? And they usually have a very light-colored belly. They also have very distinct triangular pectoral fins, very distinct triangular dorsal fin, and then a second fin on the rear part of its tail that's almost as tall as the actual dorsal fin. All right, I'm gonna dunk it back down. It's being very calm. That is so cool. The spotted gully shark is a species of hound shark they can often be found in shallow inshore waters. They favor sandy tide pools, such as the ones we have been exploring, and occasionally find themselves marooned when the tide drops. When you run your fingers in one direction across the skin, it's smooth, but if you go in reverse direction, it feels just like sandpaper. Go ahead, Mark, pet the shark. Smooth. Go one way. Wow. Right? Very rough. Like a fine grit sandpaper right there. Now this shark has one, two, three, four, five gill slits. Now when we're talking about the teeth of this creature, it's almost like a cheese grater. What they feed on are small crustaceans and other animals on the basin of the ocean. And actually this is one of those rare occasions where I could probably be bitten by a shark and be just fine. 
They oftentimes will hunt in tide pools, just sifting along the bottom for small crabs and other mollusks. Let me dip it again. Whoa, that is so cool being able to handle a shark. Okay, buddy, there you go, there you go. At nearly three feet in length, this shark is considered a juvenile, yet they can reach lengths of nearly six feet and are primarily active at night, feeding on crustaceans, small fish, and cephalopods such as octopuses. Bring the shark back up here. Man, a tide pool shark. So cool, right? Now, you may be saying to yourselves, Coyote, is this shark permanently marooned in this tide pool? No, actually the tide is on its way back in right now. Once the water gets deep enough, it will be able to move to the next pocket or out in the ocean if it chooses to. But what a cool opportunity for us to get a shark up close for the cameras. Talk about topping off a day of tide pooling here in South Africa. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. All right, buddy, let's put him back in the environment and get some cool shots of it swimming around. There you go. Wow, that's awesome. As I released the shark into a deeper pocket of water, I could hardly believe that this was the ultimate conclusion to our epic day of tide pooling. And as its silhouette disappeared into the current, I watched with a childlike wonder and a sense of gratitude for the path that led the team and I to this moment in time which marked the day we finally found and caught a tide pool shark. Nice, down into the depths of that pool. Wow, the first shark on Brave Wilderness. That was epic. Woo, tide's coming in. Let's go, guys. Yeah, Mario. What do you think of that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoyed this encounter, Make sure to go back and watch.